the fees are assessed, um, you know, both, uh, is it a per head fee, transactional fees, all aspects of essentially what goes into servicing a 457, 401A plan. Um, we actually have put together some case studies. We've done this many times before. Um, you know, a couple more recent ones. Uh, there was a city that we did this work back in uh, 2016. They had uh, three different providers and over 102 investment options, as you'd expect when someone joins the uh, retirement program, having to navigate 102 investments creates a lot of uh, confusion. Uh, their overall investment cost was about a half a percent with the record keeping services as a separate fee, almost a third of a percent. Uh, through the, the RFP for this particular client, we were able to get that down in total to about um, just under a half a percent total for costs. The overall savings was about $120,000 for this particular client. So um, something that we're very familiar with, we've done a lot in the past. Um, we've also done it with, and again, this, this is all public information. We did this uh, for the town of, uh, or the city of Stanford. We did this for, um, we're in the process of finishing up a project with uh, Bristol with the consolidation. We're actually in the process of working with uh, with West Hartford. Uh, we've, did, we've done this search for the town of Greenwich. Um, uh, and so uh, again, a lot of benefits can be, can be done by this review. Um, you're also pricing this out with the, 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 the providers that you currently have, which um, forces them to reevaluate what they're charging city employees for um, for the record keeping services that they're, uh, that, that, that they're giving. So, you know, I'll pause there before I continue to see if there's any questions around the, um, the project, the services that we're going to be doing. So, so that's the upfront work. And then the, the proposal that on an ongoing basis is that we, um, we help you build out a governance process that will on an ongoing basis, maintain a monitor, monitor, just like you do on the pension, monitor the investments, make sure you have the appropriate investments that are, that are offered to city employees for both the 457 and the 401A, uh, maintain a benchmark for the fees and keep evaluating as these assets grow over time. You want to make sure that the fees are in line with benchmarks. And again, uh, not just through the RFP, every year you're kicking the tire from a fee structure standpoint. Um, and then of course, um, holding the, the different providers to uh, what they promise with respect to participant education and, and, and advice services. So making sure that they, if they say they're gonna meet with individuals, they are uh, and, and evaluating that um, on, a, on a periodic basis. And so we would put you into a governance structure where we meet with uh, the uh, internal committee quarterly, review the investments, and then each quarter we review that that different thing I mentioned, you know, fees. Um, there's a lot of talk about uh, uh, target date fund investments, and we want to make sure that these uh, target date fund investments are appropriate for a default fund for uh, city employees. So we review those periodically, and then of course, you know, let, let's let's see how effective the plan is every year, and make sure that that people are getting to a place where they will be able to retire. And so we'll evaluate that um, in the third quarter. And so this is a very repeatable structure. We wanna hit um, all aspects, all important things that, that good stewards of uh, defined contribution plans uh, need to do. And we'll put you in that process as well. So, so that's what's proposed. I, I, uh, there's a lot of additional material in there around timeline, you know, helping communicate if there are changes to, um, uh, city employees and unions, um, talking about the overall benefit of this uh, this process. Um, I guess I'll pause there to see if there's any additional questions before we go into the service proposal. Can I just ask a question? So with the 401A, I'm used to the 401Bs, but you know, we're nonprofit. Um, and the 457, is that is the 457 plan offered to all um, city employees? And then your your role is the broker, these other providers, the four or five that you had listed are the providers. Why do we have so many providers? So um, a couple of questions, right? Uh, the, I know, sorry. No, 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 um, not a problem. 
typically 457s are uh, offered to all employees. How the municipalities are structured is the 457 is the employee's dollars um, and the 401A okay. is, is negotiated with uh, city employees to correlate with the matching amount that you're, you're providing them. So the 401A historically is taken over for the pension, right? Um, you've decided based on the unions or whatever the negotiations have been that the city's going to provide a 4% benefit and it, you know, the employee is going to also put in 4%. That goes to the 401A. Anything above and beyond that goes to the 457B. Uh, why there's so many record keepers, vendors, um, you know, historically there was a, um, well, a while back, you would get one vendor that only offered their own investment options. So to be able to get access to these other investment options, you'd add another, <laughs> potentially add another record keeper vendor into the mix. And then you'd add another one. And then all of a sudden you'd have five or six different uh, record keepers. Very, very common in the municipality space. We've moved to a, um, a, a marketplace where you can get access to any investment option in what's called an open architecture environment through one provider. Um, and you can get the scale through the website and the call center by using just one provider. Now we're gonna do an evaluation and, and that one provider, maybe two providers, we don't, we don't know what that, the outcome will be, uh, but five is, is a lot. It, it ends up uh, becoming a challenge when, if you think all the decisions someone has to make to, to, to save for retirement, to go through which record keeper I'm gonna use and then how many funds am I gonna use and then how do I asset allocate appropriately? It becomes very, very confusing. So there's been a, a, a movement in the industry to, to consolidate that to a limited number. Does that answer I, I, your question? And, and yeah. then, we're, not, um, we're not brokers, we're, we're consultants. We don't have any uh, allegiances. We're conflict free with respect to any of the record. We work with over 25 different record keepers including ICMA and Voya and, uh, and Nationwide, the, one, the, the record keepers that you have. So we just wanna make sure that the, the, the right ones are selected based on fees. And what, what may happen is they, you know, a current incumbent may come back and say, based on you know, the, uh, the, the, the RFP, we're gonna reduce our overall costs fairly significantly. So my other question is who is the, or does the city have a third party administrator to actually over See so so that, that was, that's a great question as well. Right now there isn't a third party administrator. There is a way to, uh, th the third party administrator can be done through the, the record keeper. So for instance, if you consolidate to one, Voya could actually do that work. Uh, that becomes a challenge because if you have different providers and there's limits around what you can do from a loan standpoint and how much you can contribute, someone has to, to look at how much people are putting in, how much people are taking out. Um, yeah. And through this consolidation, you can, you can get access to an administrator that can help with those efficiencies. Yeah, and I guess that was my, we always felt when we were selecting a plan that it shouldn't be the VOIA being the third party administrator because they're watching over their own nest. Um, it seems like an independent third party administrator would make sense. And particularly with, I, I really support what you're doing. It's sort of consolidating, streamlining. And I think for an employee, it should have much more access and simplicity. And as you had indicated um, in really following their, their plans. So thank you. So yeah. I just did this. That's why I have all these questions in my head. So. No, it's, uh, these are great questions uh, and, and questions that we want to, Though there will be questions from city employees, and we want to make sure uh, to be very thoughtful around the communication because everyone has their different provider right now. And wow. you know, when we can when we can um, show the improved benefits of this potential consolidation. Here's what, and and we did this recently with a um, a, a neighboring town. Uh, someone had their guy, but just didn't realize how much they were paying that guy. They love that guy. <laughs> Yeah. That guy was making a lot of money on the, the the assets that were being sent to them, and so it's all about transparency and making sure that the uh, the city employees know what things cost, um, and then obviously um, the sort of internal committee knows what those things cost, and, and and then obviously where they can go through the outcome of this the search. 
Thank you. Mm -hmm. So it's really a two-stage process. The first stage is the RFP work. Um, and then the second stage is sort of the ongoing, um, you know, evaluation of the investments and then the ongoing evaluation of the fees. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the proposed fees on our end can all be paid through, they can be paid through different ways, one through a line item um, budget item or through uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 the city employees can pay that through the savings that we, we end up finding through the search. Thank you, Tyler. Um, before we move into the next agenda item, which is actually a, a vote that we'll be asking the council um, to take, are there any other questions? All right, then I'm going to move right into item number five. I will entertain a motion to enter into a contract with DeMeo Schneider and Associates LLC for the services and fees as described on pages 22 and 23 of the March 2021 presentation. Do I have that motion? So moved. Thank you, Councilman Oliver. I'll second. And Rubino. seconded by um, Councilman Rubino. Um, further questions or comments before I call the motion? Seeing and hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any, any opposed? motion carries. Again, thank you, Tyler and Tony. I appreciate your being here as well. Thanks, everyone. Pleasure. Have a nice Thank time. you. Everybody, moving into item number six, um, I will entertain a motion to authorize the city to enter into a tax incentive agreement as described in Economic Development Director's memo dated February 9th, 2021, for certain real property and improvements located at 49 Hayden Hill Road, no, excuse me, Hayden Hill, Torrington, Connecticut, in accordance with the city of Torrington's tax incentive policy. So we'll um, move it. Thank you. I heard Councilman Rubino. Did I have a second? Second. Thank you. Second of a Councilwoman Wagner. Are there questions on the memo or on the motion? Seeing and hearing none, I'll call the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item Moving into item seven. I will entertain a motion to schedule a virtual public hearing to be held at 6.30 p.m. on Monday, March 15th, 2021 for the purposes of soliciting public input regarding a resolution that would authorize the city of Torrington to undertake programs and projects as authorized under the Connecticut City and Town Development Act under chapter 114 of the Connecticut General Statutes. So moved. Thank you, Councilman Walter. So moved. Seconded by Councilman Oliver. Are there questions on this motion? You explain what we mean by programs and projects. What programs and projects would be included in this? So um, chapter 114 of the Connecticut General Statutes um, uh, is uh, a chapter that is designed to afford municipalities, especially distressed municipalities um, that are struggling with uh, unemployment rates that exceed the state average, um, housing stock that is old, aging, um, uh, un, uh, uh, lower socioeconomic demographics, um, blighted properties. So what they did is they pulled together um, several um, statutes that provide incentives that include bonding, um, that include um, lending, that improve, uh, uh, approve um, bond, uh, 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 just development incentives. Um, and we'll give a, you know, a much fuller description of what that would be as part of the public hearing um, and send you in advance, not only a copy of chapter 114, which um, 
which uh, is uh, chap is statute section 7481 through 7-500, I believe. Um, and uh, you can read through those things prior to the public hearing. Thank you, I appreciate that. I did get a phone call from someone who saw the agenda and saw this and it didn't make any sense. And I thought if we spoke about it tonight, that would be a way of getting that information out. But thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, a lot of incentives, um, obviously we would have to um, agree to the declaration and um, it is a limited declaration. Uh, and I do believe that these are um, strategies that as a distressed municipality um, that is always trying to find uh, funding, um, you know, that we should be receiving. Um, I think this will give us a little bit of a leg up in being able to attract those developers. Totally agree. And thank you for putting it on the agenda. Okay. All right. So I have a motion. I have a second. Any other questions? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries, thank you. All right, item eight. I will entertain a motion to accept the recommendation of the elderly services director and services for the elder commission to waive the city's bid process and authorize a mayor to purchase one new 2021 Chevy Colorado temperature in the dark. Temperature controlled, meals on wheels, four by four delivery vehicle from sole vendor delivery concepts east of Hampstead, North Carolina for a total cost of $50,328, including delivery and graphics. I'll move it. Thank you, Councilwoman Rowett. Second. Second by Councilwoman Wagner. Questions on the motion? I see Joel is on the phone. Seeing no questions, I'll call the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item nine, I will entertain a motion to adopt resolution number 143-212, empowering the mayor to execute and deliver in the name and on behalf of the city of Torrington, a survey of planning grant contract with the state of Connecticut, Department of Economic and Community Development. So moved. Thank you, Councilman Waldron. Second. Seconded by Councilwoman Wagner. Questions on this motion? Seeing none, I'll call the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Motion carries. Item 10, I will entertain a motion to accept Corporation Council's recommendations to authorize a mayor pursuant to CGS section 12-179 to release the liens described in Attorney Michelle's memo dated March 1, 2021. Move. Thank move. you, I heard Councilman Waldron and Councilwoman Rouette. Um, questions on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 11, I'll entertain a motion to accept the recommendation of the tax collector and authorize the tax refunds indicated on the list dated March 1, 2021. I'll move it. Thank you, I heard um, Councilwoman Rouette and I heard a second from Councilman Waldron. Questions on this motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any Aye. opposed? Motion carries. Item 12, I'll entertain a motion by the City Council acting here and as a WPCA to accept the recommendation of the tax collector and authorize the sewer use refunds indicated on the list dated March 1, 2021. So moved. Thank you, Councilman Oliver. Second. Second by Councilman Waldron. Questions on this motion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 13. Um, I'll entertain a motion to consider business by department heads. I'll move it. Thank you, Councilwoman Wett. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Councilwoman Wagner. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. 
Uh, let me just pull up who I have on the line. Um, I have um, Dan Farley. Any? Nothing, nothing Mayor. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, Carol Anderson, anything from the city clerk's office? No news from the clerk's office. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Um, Joel, anything from uh, the senior center? Um, nope. We're coming up on a year like everybody else, Mayor, and uh, just wanted the council to know we've been there every day. The staff's been doing our thing, and uh, we're ready to keep helping wherever we can. Thank you for approving the vehicle. Thank you, Joel. Um, you have done a great job for us over there at the Senior Center. Um, Vic, Michelle, anything this evening from Corporation Council? Uh, nothing there. Thank you. All right, then um, I think I'm going to move into the next agenda item. Item number 14, I'll entertain a motion to consider business by the mayor and members. So moved. Thank you, Councilman Waldron. Second. And seconded by Councilwoman Rowett. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Let me go through the list. Uh, anything from um, Councilman Oliver this evening? No, thank you, Mayor. No. Nope. Um, thank you. Anything from Councilwoman Wagner? Um, I only want to repeat what you said to Joel because they've done a phenomenal job. And I know I've driven by there and seen the routine they have. I think it's been, it's made a huge difference in many lives this year. So thank you very much to you and to your staff. I also want to thank Emily because I know she's listening in for the great article she had in the paper this weekend, highlighting some of our downtown businesses and the steps they've taken during COVID to maintain their businesses. So that was, it was a great read and I really appreciate the attention. So. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Kevin Arrow. Nothing, Mayor. Thank you. Councilman Rubino. Uh, just one thing. Uh, I like to see the uh, grant list always increase. So the increase of the 2.22% is uh, very welcome. Thank you. Oh, I agree. Thank you. Uh, Councilwoman Rouette. Uh, I'll ditto that, Frank, or Councilman Rubino, but I have nothing else, Mayor. Thank you. Um, Councilman Waldron. And nothing from me, Mayor. Thank you. Okay. Um, the only thing that I would add, um, other than being quite happy to be able to share that grand list information with you, um, is uh, we also learned today that the um, uh, House bill, um, which was, I think, 831, became Senate bill uh, 1560 something. That was where I provided testimony um, appealing to our legislature to fully fund or, or excuse me, um, establish a tiered funding stream for our pilot, that is the payment in lieu of taxes for state owned properties and hospitals and colleges um, passed both the House and the Senate today. So fingers crossed, um, as you will recall, that was um, a disparity or a gap of about $1.4 million in funding that the city does not receive under the current funding methodology. So um, this proposal um, proposes to pull that funding from the uh, municipal revenue share accounts. <coughs> Fingers crossed they fund that account so that there's money so that they can fund the tiered program. Um, but that is a pretty big win. Um, and I will be joining my fellow distressed municipality um, selectmen and mayors um, at a press conference tomorrow to talk about the impact that this would have on the city of Torrington. Um, sure. With that, um, you know, it's budget. Um, I start reviewing budgets um, for the public safety, um, fire, police, uh, animal control, traffic, um, and volunteer fire departments um, tomorrow, Wednesday, and Thursday with the Board of Safety. And then we jump into the work of the budget subcommittee um, next week. Um, Part of that will, of course, include um, a better review of revenues because I think that we have reached that point where we would all agree that we have been fiscally responsible in maintaining costs to the best that we can. And what we really find ourselves 
facing right now is a revenue um, problem. I mean, if we're relying strictly on taxes, uh, our taxpayers are overburdened um, and we really do need to find ways to identify and collect those other revenues. So a little bit of work ahead of us, um, but looking forward to your um, input and um, advice throughout. With that, if there is no other business before the board, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Oh, oh. Thank you, Councilwoman Witt, and seconded by Councilman Waldron. All in favor? Aye. 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 You're in the dark. I am in the dark. <laughs> I had to talk to them. I need jumping jacks. <laughs> Way to be efficient, Mayor. Keep that electric electricity still down. That's the demonstration. That's it. Thank you all. Have a good evening. Have a good evening.